Hello there, everybody. My name is Waddles, and yeah, I should, um, I should probably back up, right? Uh, that's probably a little bit better. Minecraft 1.14 Village and Pillage is seriously probably almost maybe here. And when I say seriously probably almost maybe, I mean within a few weeks. It's pre-release time. That means that it's just about time to start prepping your old worlds for the brand new update. And today, I present you five of those things. We'll be going over five things that I think you should do to prepare your old world for 1.14. If you can think of one more, drop that down below, and while you're down there, drop a like and subscribe. And if you'd like to get some cool perks, check out that join button, it just launched on my channel and there are some neat perks. The first big thing that you should probably do before updating your world has to do with the villagers in your world, especially if you have a trading hall. You may want to consider trading with your villagers, especially if you have some really good ones like a decent mending villager or something like that a few times before you update your world. Villager trade shouldn't change once you update your world, but that's not to say that there won't be any bugged villagers or something unfortunate like that. Again, your villagers should be fine, their trade shouldn't change, and the prices should be the same, uh, but trading mechanics do change as well. In 1.14, villagers can only refill their trades two times a day. That is definitely going to slow down trading, especially if a trade unfortunately gets locked after doing it like twice. Also, to continue trading, and of course to be happy, villagers will need access to their workstations as well, so you should probably prepare for a pretty big trading hall revamp. Possibly the biggest thing that you should definitely do before you update your world has to do with this thing sitting right in front of me. This is an old style iron farm. 1.14 breaks these things. Old iron farms, from this simple one all the way up to crazy iron titans, will no longer work. Before updating your world, you may want to consider a nice and long AFK session near your good old iron farm before you have to tear it down. Now, there are working 1.14 iron farms, but so far, none of those farms have the amazing rates that things like the Iron Titan have. So, uh, you won't be out of luck with iron farms, but if you have some mega farm built, uh, you will definitely get a whole lot less iron from AFKing by that thing. I've heard that some of the hermits have talked about, or even have already, AFK'd by their farms and their server just to stock up on iron, because it's going to be a big change. If you rely on iron a lot, definitely get some good AFK time in before you update your world. This is a huge one. The third spot on our list is occupied by exploration. I've actually seen quite a bit of comments as of late uh, asking me about how world loading works. Once 1.14 updates, you can definitely update your world and get the new stuff, but you'll want to plan an expedition. So the third spot on our list is all about planning an expedition to go find the new things, like maybe a new village, some new villagers, bamboo, pandas, all of that cool stuff. And to, to better explain that, I think we should talk about how chunk loading works in Minecraft just a little bit, like a, a brief breakdown of chunk loading. The Minecraft world is broken up into chunks. Chunks are 16 by 16 squares, something a little like this right here. Once this chunk is loaded in, it is saved in your world. Meaning the chunk that I'm in right now and all of the other chunks in this area that I can see have been loaded in and will not be changed once I update my world. These are saved as is. To find a brand new village or to find a bamboo forest or something like that, you will need to go to somewhere that you have never gone before in your world. That means somewhere that is unloaded. So let's say I went over that way to get some ice and then I went over that way to go to a skeleton farm and I, I came from that way, but I have never gone over that way. That is the way that I will probably want to go once I update my world so I can find the new content. Now, of course, the 1.14 items can be moved into these old chunks, but uh, you won't load up your world and find a brand new village in your field over here. That's just not how things work. Once you load something in, it is how it is. That is, of course, unless you change it. So basically, it would be a good idea to get a game plan as to where you want to explore once your world updates. I would consider gathering up some food, some beds, some maps as well, because having that stuff makes your explorations even easier. 
Also, uh, make sure you write down the coordinates to your base. Um, you, <laughs> you don't want to lose that thing, probably. Idea number four and five both have to do with our base directly. Uh, the fourth spot on our list has to do with this panda over here in the sheep pen. Nobody likes a random panda inside of a sheep pen. It's just weird, it's random, and uh, the panda will probably get in your way. You should definitely consider prepping some new animal pens for the new animals if you like to collect animals. So the two big ones that we have here are the panda and the cat. Cats can be tamed with raw cod, so maybe uh, you might want to uh, collect up some of that by AFK fishing or just fishing in general. Cats are really cool to have around and pandas are just... I, I mean, they're cool to have around too, but <laughs> they don't really do anything, so they're just kind of there. It might not be a bad idea, though, to make like a cat house or some kind of cat area, and then, of course, a panda pen for the pandas that you may want to bring back to your base. If you're having trouble figuring out what to do while waiting for the update, this is a good idea. Maybe try and build a really, really cool cat house or an awesome panda pen, and then, of course, when you go on your 1.14 exploration, you can find cats and pandas and bring them back and put them right inside of their pens. And yes, of course, I can't forget about the adorably awesome fox. Foxes are going to be difficult to contain because they are chicken. Foxes are giant scaredy cats that will run away from you um, very, very fastly. But uh, prepping up some kind of fox enclosure, and remember, they can jump over fences, so you'll probably need like a building or something, could be kind of cool. Foxes, in my opinion, are one of the coolest uh, Minecraft mobs to date because of their whole jumping and item holding things. So yeah, maybe set up some super secure fox containment facility as well, alongside your cat house and the panda pen. And then, of course, you would never have to worry about putting your panda in a sheep pen and getting confused as to which is which. And finally, the last spot on our list has to do with farms. If you are like me and you like to farm anything that you can in Minecraft, you may want to consider prepping up some of those farms or at least marking out some areas in your town or in your base for those farms once the content is here. Farmable items in 1.14 include corn flour and the lily of the valley, uh, bamboo, of course, so you can make scaffolding, and even villagers. Old-style villager breeders will not work anymore, so you'll need to make a new one, which is actually pretty easy. I do have a tutorial on that if you're looking for it. To farm the cornflower and the lily of the valley, you will kind of need to wait for your world to update. You'll have to go find where those flowers are spawning and make a box there, basically. But for bamboo, you can basically set up a sugarcane farm without water. And then, of course, once your world updates, plant the bamboo there and you're good to go. Who knows, maybe you want to modify your bamboo farm and put some water in there and then plant sugarcane in there for now until the world updates. For a villager breeder, you'll basically need some beds, some dirt, and then, of course, some farmer villagers. All of this stuff can really be collected at any point. There's not much prep needed for a villager breeder, uh, but maybe just go find a spot in your world for the breeder. I might go and say, hey, maybe a villager breeder over near the hill over there. That could be a cool spot or a bamboo farm out behind the sugar cane. Just doing stuff like that and, of course, the other four things on the list today will help you prepare your world more than enough for the new update. And, of course, these aren't the only farms you can prepare for. We do have sweet berries coming. Maybe you want to farm the animals, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Maybe even a brand new iron farm. But my general point here is maybe collect up some materials and prepare to build some new farms once the update releases. This can help keep you busy while you're waiting for the update. But with that, that wraps up five things that you should do to prep for the 1.14 update. Doing some of these things might give you some more ideas in your world if you're lacking inspiration currently while waiting for the update. You wouldn't be the only one. A uh, big shout out to anyone who remembers this world. This was a really, really fun world. And yes, I will be returning to survival once 1.14 drops. So keep your eyes out for that from me. I have a really, really cool series idea in mind. And I, I think you guys are going to love it. Uh, but what would you be doing to prep your world? Let me know down below. My name is Waddles. I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like and subscribe if you haven't yet. Check out the links down in the description and then go have a good day. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Waddles and I will see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.